We've covered series circuits and we've covered parallel circuits, but what happens if you combine them into a combination circuit? So with combination rules, really the simplest thing is you wanna take all the parallel stuff and combine it into one number. So then all you have left is that combined thing that is in series with the rest. So you just have a larger series circuit. So that doesn't seem all that complex and it's really not. It looks a lot more confusing than it really is. But let's say that we have this crazy complex circuit. I've labeled each one of the points where they go together as a node. So N1 is this point, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, and 7 and 8. There's different ways you could do this. You could call this N5 and this N6 and N7 if you want to get like really specific with it. Um, but the point at which something meets up and there's like a junction is usually a node. So I'm just using that for like understanding where we're at in a circuit and the complexity with it. So we'll notice that we've got seven resistors here. So we've got resistor one, two, and three, but then we also have four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna start combining these things because if I'm able to figure out what the total resistance is for this, I can turn it into one number. So now it's just one resistance instead of two of these. Same thing here, R6 and seven. I'm gonna combine those so that they are one resistance. And then what happens is we have these two that are now just one resistance and one resistance that are in series with each other so we can add them together. And then we get one total resistance for this whole entire crazy thing. Then we just have these two that are in parallel with each other because now this whole craziness is one number and we have another number and we smash those again together to create one total number for this whole side of the thing. So then all we have left is a series circuit. We've got this one, this combined craziness into one and we've got this one and then we can sit and figure out what everything is as a series circuit and the numbers are a lot prettier. So let's get into the example. Say we've got some, uh, all of these are labeled. Um, so we've got one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, all of that stuff. Let's go into it. With voltage, uh, the reason why combining everything works is because with voltage, we have the source voltage, we have the constant voltage, and then we have dropped voltage, right? Constant voltage in the case of a parallel circuit, but we have dropped voltage in the case of series circuits. So we can't just like equate all of those things. We have to reduce. So the best way to deal with figuring out voltage is to solve parallel, then solve series. Current, same thing. We have series, which is uh, a constant amount of voltage. And then in parallel circuits, we have voltage that's proportional to the resistance on any given branch. So there's two different things. We can't just like cram those together. We gotta solve for one, reduce it so that we can solve for the other. So the same solution, we're solving parallel, then we're solving series. Resistance, uh, we have the series resistance, which is just the sum of the total resistances. But then we've also got the parallel circuit where we have the inverse sum of inverses. So we can't cram those together. So again, solve parallel, reduce it, solve the uh, series. And then power, power doesn't really matter. Each resistor is gonna have a certain amount of power that it produces, but with voltage, being dropped in a series circuit and not being dropped in a parallel circuit, the amount of wattage coming off of each thing can't just be figured out and crammed together. We have to figure out the voltage drops and what that portion of voltage is gonna have an effect on that one resistor in the, the series circuit. And then the parallel circuit, um, it's just gonna be the, the actual power that's applied because voltage doesn't change at all in a parallel circuit. Voltage is constant on each one of the branches. So again, dealing with the parallel, then we're gonna deal with the series. That's just the easiest way to go about this for every single one of these things. So the first thing that I do is I'm gonna take this circuit that we drew and I'm gonna try to deal with these things. So I'm gonna combine both of those and it's, since it's two resistors, I'm not gonna do the inverse sum of inverses, the one over the one over jazz. I'm just gonna do product over sum method. Two resistors, we've got R4 and R5. Uh, we multiply them together, so we've got four times three, which is 12. Then we're gonna add on the bottom over the sum, uh, R4 and R5, so we got four plus three, which is seven. 12 divided by seven is 1.7. So now, this crazy block is just a simple 1.7 ohm resistor. Do the same thing down here, R6 and R7, we multiply them over the sum, so we've got three times two is six over three plus two, which is five, six divided by five is 1.2. So boom, that whole thing smashes together as a 1.2 ohm resistor. Then we've got 1.7, 
plus 1.2 because now it's just a simple series circuit. And uh, I'm calling this R4, R5 combined re is 1.7. I'm calling R6 and R7, just I'm calling it R6, R7. It's a new resistance. Uh, and that's 1.2. So we just add to get our total resistance for this whole branch. And 1.7 plus 1.2 is 2.9. So now this branch is a 2.9 ohm resistor that's in parallel with this. So let's move forward. We've combined all of that, right? We just said 2.9 total resistance for that entire crazy branch, but we still have something parallel. We wanna get rid of all of our parallels to make it so that we can just do easy series stuff. So now we're gonna take both of these resistances and combine them and smash them together. So we've got our total resistance. Again, there's two of them. So we're gonna do product over sum. We have R2 times what I'm now calling R4567. <laughs> it's just the combined of four, five, and six, and seven. This leg, I'm just calling this resistor R4567. So we're gonna do R2 times this resistor, which is uh, two times 2.9, which you should get 5.8. And then uh, we're gonna do the sum of those. So this resistor, which is two plus two, uh, 2 2.9, which is 4.9. So you got 5.8 divided by 4.9, we get 1.18. So now we just smash this whole thing together. And now we've just got one big resistor that's 1.18 ohms. So now we have a simple circuit we can deal with because we got rid of all the craziness. The total effect of all of that craziness on the circuit is really only 1.18 ohms. So when we go back and we look at our original, all of this mixed with this, this whole thing, the effects of applying a voltage to it, how it's gonna act is 1.18 total ohms. Now we just have this simple series circuit to deal with. So start out, we're gonna do our total resistance because we wanna know what the total resistance of this is so that we can start messing with other numbers. So if we take our total resistance of a series circuit, it's just the sum of all the other resistances. So we have R1, which is one ohm, RE, which is 1.18 ohm, and then R3, which is three ohms. We add all those together, we get 5.18 ohms. So the total resistance for this circuit, combined with all the craziness, right? The total, when we apply 100 volts, across this crazy circuit is gonna be 5.18 ohms. Then now we can figure out our current because we know what the total resistance is. So current is gonna be the voltage divided by the total resistance of that circuit. We have 100 volts that we're applying and then we have 5.18 ohms. So 19.3 amps is gonna flow through this whole thing. Now, this is a series circuit, right? So it's gonna be a constant 5.1 ohms. If we were to try to analyze just this, the parallel craziness over here, that would change based off of each one of the branches, but it would still combined end up being throughout the whole circuit on this side of it, it would end up being 19.3 amps. So a small amount of that would change right within here, but we don't need to look at that necessarily. We just wanna know that our total number across these resistances is 19.3 amps and it's constant. So the next thing we can do then is we can evaluate the voltage drop across each one of these. So this will have a voltage drop, even though this was all a, par a parallel circuit, it's, it's going to act like a single resistor. So although the 100 volts is constant in a parallel circuit, there's not gonna be voltage drops. It's the 100 volts applied to each thing. We've combined all of this and it's going to act like a series 1.18 ohm resistor. So there is going to be a voltage drop after all of these crazy things happen and that voltage drop we can calculate. And same thing over here, there's gonna be a voltage drop here. So what the importance of the voltage drop is it means in a series circuit, the voltage is dropping. So we don't have the full 100 volts applied to each one of the resistances. We've got smaller dropped voltages. So the amount of power coming off or converting or being consumed or, or um, changing from electrical energy to heat or to light is not gonna be as much. We can't just apply 100 volts across resistance one and, and get a power number for that because voltage is dropping for each one of these loads. So we only have a little bit of voltage for each one of these. Um, and that's important because it's not that way in, in parallel circuits. In parallel, you have full voltage, so you have full power at each one of the resistances. So if we wanna figure out the voltage drop for E1, 
E1 I'm associating with R1, we would just take the current 19.3 amps times that resistance, which is one ohm, 19.3 uh, times one is 19.3 volts. So we're gonna have 19.3 volts to work with for this resistance to figure out how much heat's gonna come off of that. Voltage two, same thing, you take 19.3 amps times 1.18 ohms, and there's a 22.8 volt drop across this resistance. And then number three, we've got our 19.3 amps of current times our three ohms of resistance, and we get 57.9 volt drop across this load. And if you add all of these three things up, just to make sure that that's right, you'll get 100 volts because Kirchhoff's voltage law in a series circuit says that all of the, the sum of all of the voltage drops have to equal the source voltage. 100 volts of drop, 100 volts of source. So we're good on all of that up to this far. So then once we know that each one of these drops, we only really have 57.9 volts available for this load, how much power is that load going to produce because we don't have 100 volts across it. So I'm an idiot and I messed up my math. So if you're on the last screen paying attention to the numbers down below for power, I added some things instead of multiplied them. Sorry, but here we go. So what last thing that we're gonna do for power is we're gonna figure out the power for each one of those resistances. And what we do is we are looking at P equals I times E pi. Uh, so we have our current total current for the, the series circuit. We have our voltage drop for our first resistor, which is 19.3, that gets us 372.5 watts. Same thing, power for the next one, we've got our amperage times our voltage drop for the second resistor, uh, we get 440 watts, and our third resistor amperage times the voltage drop for that, and we get 1,107.5. Uh, then to figure out our total power, we just add each one of those powers. So we've got, 372.5 plus 440 plus 1117.5, 11, and we get 1930 watts. Now, the other way that we could have gone about this to figure out the same information is to use the pie chart. The pie chart actually has a formula, P equals E squared over R. This is one of those formulas uh, with Ohm's law or Joule's law, you know, the, the um, two different wheels that we have. Uh, you never are figuring out power and resistance in the same thing. You know, Ohm's law is voltage, amperage, and resistance. There is no power in that formula. So there are certain formulas within the power wheel that actually combine resistance and power in the same formula, and this is one of them. So if we have a known voltage, which we do 100 volts, uh, we just take 100 volts squared over the total resistance that we had just figured out, 5.18 ohms, uh, divide those out and you get 1930.5. It's a slight difference, but I also rounded with some of these numbers, so it's a lot closer uh, in reality, but a little bit easier way to figure that out. So we know our total wattage for the entire circuit based on the voltage drops for each one of these resistances and the total resistance and the current that we've put together is 1930 or 1930.5 watts. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys learned something. Let me know if, if you have any comments or questions below. Um, if you haven't watched the series video or the parallel video, I definitely recommend you go watch those first. Um, if you were suffering through this and none of this made sense, go watch the series video first, watch the parallel video second, and then come back and watch this. And I think things will make a lot more sense. Love you crazy people. And I'll see you in the next one.